Well, the Ford Foundation, for instance, told me that they thought we were uh, too liberal and too controversial and that we would endanger their cultural programs in Austria. I mean, the first festival was being held in Vienna. It was not encouraging at all. And the, the private individuals to whom I went uh, often had uh, particular points of view to put forward, which would have been much, much more restricting than, than uh, the CIA funds were, which were free. I mean, no one was told what to say. What do you mean they were free? You mean to say it was easier for you to work for the CIA than a private that's organization? That's right. That's right. And, and the, the reason I think that comes as a surprise as it did to me at the time. I mean, I had uh, the conventional liberals' view of the CIA as a right-wing incendiary group. And I was amazed to discover that this was far from the case, that they were enlightened, liberal, nonpartisan activists of the sort who characterized the Kennedy administration, for instance. You have not been working now uh, uh, for the CIA since 1962. Mm -hmm. uh, you still criticize. Uh, you were down oh, recently yes. in Washington. <laughs> yes, when the when the story broke that I had once been that I had for four years been a Central Intelligence agent, I was demonstrating outside the Pentagon underneath Mr. McNamara's office against bombing in Vietnam, and uh, this didn't precisely fit with the image of a CIA agent. But then, neither does the CIA. What does former member of the CIA mean? <laughs> Uh, there, there is the uh, literalist interpretation, and in Berkeley you've all read Idri Shah, and you know you should never trust the literalist interpretation of anything. The literalist interpretation is a former CIA agent is somebody who's quit the agency and has no contact with them anymore. And then there's the esoteric interpretation or the allegorical interpretation, which is that a former CIA agent is somebody who's been assigned to something so dirty the agency doesn't want it traced back to them. And so he's officially not on the books anymore, but he's being paid through a numbered bank account in Switzerland. Regarding the feminist movement, what does the slogan, make the personal political, mean? To me, that, that, I always hated that slogan. What it really means is you take your personal damage and one of the things that's very obvious in those very early days of the women's movement, how many of the radical women leaders of the movement themselves had really disturbed backgrounds and were very, very violent. Uh, and then you make that political. So if my dad's a shit, all men are shits. If you say that, you can do almost anything you like. You can go from the personal and make it political. So what happened is sufficient group of women got together to complain bitterly because you have to remember the beginning of the feminist movement was a Marxist movement. It was women in the left of, of the politics in Britain who decided that they had had enough of working with men on the left and were going to have their own, in quotes, movement. So our feminist movement never grew from a grassroots of the working class women that they were always talking about. There weren't any working class women. It was actually academics, university lecturers, um, young women students was the beginning of the women's movement. Well, one of the things they told me was that um, he brought, we were, he was at the house one night and uh, we, were talk, we were talking and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I had pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want me, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, we couldn't tax half the population before Women's Lib. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. So it breaks up the family. The, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two prim primary reasons for women's love, which, which I thought up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, 
where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure.